Yo, what is going on guys? Hope you guys are all having a great Halloween. Today I want to discuss what you should be doing after level 65. So you should be completing the main story quest. Right now my main story quest is in Elysian Wilds, but eventually after you're done in Murkgard, it will bring you to Brimstone and you'll eventually end up here in your main story quest. When you do, I recommend picking up this guy's quest line as well. And that is so you can come up here. Once you've done that secondary quest, it'll allow you to open this portal also gives you some nice stuff and once we travel through the portal it'll bring us right here talk to this guy he'll have um this heart rune quest this is actually extremely important so now that you pick up the quest you have to go do your heart stone quest you want to make your way over to the marker as such once you guys finally make it to the marker on the map you will then have to scale this massive rune read the glyph and, what the and when you read the glyph you'll have to go all the way back down just jump down like this. You don't have to go all the way down to the bottom, just to this door. Now, once you're done completing the quest, it'll give you one heart stone rune and it'll allow you to get this slot right here. So now you'll see you'll, whatever runes that you've been picking up through dungeoning will be down here. I highly recommend not deleting these until you understand what they do. But if you want to upgrade them, you would come into the stone cutting table here and you would just have to make sure it's unequipped so it can't be in here and it has to not be locked. And when you come in here, you can then craft it. It'll tell you everything you need to upgrade it. If you want to know generally the best Hearthstone runes I recommend grabbing for anything PvE related or PvP, the one you get from a need is generally really good. It's uh, Detonate. A lot of you like running that one. It, what it does is it allows you to charge up and then explode. Doing a bunch of damage is generally what you run in PvE and PvP. The other one is Stoneform and the Stoneform one you get from Lazarus Dungeon right here killing the final boss. So those are the two heart runes I'd recommend grabbing. So one from Lazarus and then the one from Anid, which should be right about here. And once you get the heart rune of choice, just come to the stone cutting table and upgrade, upgrade them. It'll tell you exactly what you need right here. After you're done grabbing your heart rune, you want to then focus on getting your gear score up to about 690, 700 is a pretty good spot. And it's the only way to get 700 gear score and above is either by upgrading an artifact, so something like this. Apparently, they haven't fixed the upgrading artifact part yet, so you cannot upgrade it to 725 yet, but you will be able to do it in the future. Or by doing the new worm, the Sand Worm Raid, which is right here on the map, Trial of Devour. Or the other way is by doing the Trial, Hive of Gorgons. So getting good 700 gear is definitely uh, on your to-do list, since it's extremely important. And a good way to do that is by coming over here to Cutlass Keys on the map and coming into the Well of Fortune. Now, in order to buy things, you need Mystic Doubloons, but once you do, you can come down here and buy weapons, some nice chests, and for all your armor, jewelries, and whatever weapons. And then another thing you can buy that's generally pretty useful are these 35 Mystic Doubloons little golden cursed crates. These are daily. So make sure you're stacking up up each day you can buy some gypsum orbs or anything like that as well so you can look around to see what you want i really wouldn't recommend buying like hardy meals this would be super cheap on the trading post or honing stones that would be pretty useless or i wouldn't really recommend grabbing that stuff since in my opinion it's better to focus on getting your weapon now these are pretty strong it gives you 710 and these are pretty good for pvp early on since they're high gear score come with vicious which is a pretty solid perk and then penetrating the empowered pvp only critical hits against an empowered player will have 10 percent armor penetration and reduce the duration of the empowers on them by seven percent this is really this is good against medium and generally heavy players if you want an early game weapon that's pretty good i'd recommend grabbing this farming 750 mystic doubloons and grabbing up one of these weapons also upgrading like your armor your jewelry or whatever you want in here as well now you may be asking how do i get mystic doubloons well there's two main two uh really good ways to actually do it one is by going back in here and then buying this key here buy this weekly make sure it's only five doubloons but you will be getting big gains once you buy that five dollar key you want to teleport to the pvp zone once you teleport to the shrine you want to get on your mound and ride your way towards the pvp zone don't worry we won't be going inside just want to explain generally how to farm this once you finally come get to this point on the map you will come over here to this chest and use your key to open the doubloon cache now when you open the doubloon cache it'll give you 500 juicy doubloons as you can see right there we're absolutely loaded 
Uh, you may be asking, how do I get more doubloons, but I don't want to PvP? That's a great question. The best way to grab it is actually by doing this elite run. So you'll just X C K in chat. You'll see people saying like X C K like this. And you just want to join up with that. They'll take you down to this way shrine right here. And you guys will run across, do it like this generally. Clear this whole place else. There'll be two chests here. Once you get those two chests, you'll run down here as such. Clear this out. Come down here. Get everything in here. And make your way around in a circle like this. You'll then go back to the way shrine. So once you're done here, go back to the way shrine, teleport to this way shrine and get the last couple chests in here. You'll get like about 700 doubloons by doing this route once a day. Highly recommend doing it. Super easy. No PVP. Chill, relax. But now how do I get my cursed coconut? This is extremely important. You get one of these a week and the best way to grab one is by, well, the only way to grab one is by going into the PVP zone. I recommend teleporting to this way shrine here and trying to loot either in this area, this area down here, or just scavenging along the coast here. Don't go to the settlement that is where everyone PVP wants to be. So I recommend avoiding this place at all costs, but generally I don't really see too many players over here, especially there'll be people in here but over here. seems pretty dry. You just like to sneak around, look for the big crates. They have to be the chests. They can't that's to be a chest that kind of looks like this. So the chest you want to be looting will look like this. These are the ones that will drop you the gold coconut. As you can see there, we got our golden cursed coconut right there. You have to loot those chests. The other chests will not give you the, give you the coconut. So once again, I'm right here. No one generally comes over here. I'm on even on, on prime time and I was still able to find a chest. Didn't even see a player. And I'm also on the fresh start. So this is a pretty dead area. You just run around here, look for a chest, or there can be another chest in here generally. I just like to run around here if I'm looking for a chest. For some reason, no one likes coming down here. I don't know why. Something I also want to quickly mention is you can pick up these little maps and they'll tell you, like you see with this X is, there'll be an elite stash that you can loot once every 24 hours. So you, but you have to find these first to, to be able to open those. So maybe Ali, there is a map on New World Database that you can look at and it'll show you exactly where all the chests are and everything like that. So you can easily pull that up on your second monitor. I'll make sure to leave a link down to that in the description below. Next, I want to discuss artifacts. Every build needs them. They're extremely strong and you should know which ones to get. You can have one artifact on your armor, one artifact on your jewelry. So I can have this here, or you can have, and you can have one artifact on your weapon. Now there's a bunch of ways to get these. You can get them in open world PVP by doing the PVP tracks or by doing dungeon mutated expeditions. The most important thing I can say is definitely make sure you look at the mutated expeditions. So today, this week, it's Starstone, Depths, and Garden of Genesis. Garden of Genesis drops a hatchet, the Freya hatchet. Depths drops an amulet, and Starstone drops this ring, the Blood Drinker. I would make sure you know each. I'd make sure you either, if you don't know what artifacts to run, I'd recommend at least checking out what mutations are, th are this week and what artifact drops from them so you don't miss it out because generally you'll have to wait at least a couple three weeks maybe even four weeks depending on the rotation until you get to the next chance you can grab it so make sure you're always looking at the mutations and seeing do i need to grind this do i want this maybe in the future or not i get that out of the way because less and less people will be wanting to do the dungeon and you will have to wait if you suddenly like you want blood drinker but you waited too long and now starstone will not be back until a couple weeks later that's gonna really suck another thing is i'd recommend farming the open world artifacts too because less and less people are doing that as the servers have been on longer and longer. One of the best ones is definitely the finisher. I have not gotten that sadly, but you get it from down here and you get some nice artifacts by doing the main story quests, such as Entomb Leather Pants. You also can farm Featherweight, an extremely strong artifact for PVP light users that drops from over here. I recommend picking those up as well. This, can be, this one can be done solo, but finisher generally cannot be done solo. How do you know which artifacts to get? Well, that generally just goes onto your build. For the earring, I recommend getting Endless Thirst. It's really good on a lot of things, and you can farm that generally right here in Savage Divide. When it's mutated, it has to be mutated, so you can't get it right now. But when it's mutated, you can farm that up. It's really strong on a lot of builds, so I definitely recommend looking into that. It's pretty good. Uh, Void Dark Plate, you get this from BB, but you can't get that since that was last week's mutation. But this is generally really strong on a lot of setup as well. 
And for your weapons, that's very dependent on what you're running. I can't really specify into that. But for PvE, a two leather pants and featherweight are decently good options. You get that by just following the main story quest and featherweight you get from farming here once again. If you guys do have any questions about artifacts, I'll be happy to answer them down in the description below. But that's just too much detail to get into right now. I'd recommend going to your faction vendor and maxing this bad boy out. You may say, well, I don't want to really buy anything. Well, there is some really good stuff that you can get from talking to this guy. Generally, it's by getting your daily gypsum orbs. These are extremely strong. I recommend doing these, getting these every day. They're super easy to get. They're only like 6,000. And I recommend grabbing your chromatic seal as well, because these can be very useful for upgrading your gear later on. So if I wanted to upgrade, let's say my blood drinker here and get the last perk slot, I would have to use a chromatic seal and a weapon and a jewelry matrix to do so. And when you get chromatic seals, well, you have to buy them at the faction manager. These are time gated by one day, by the way. You don't have to buy them every day. Just make sure you got at least a couple on hand. Just in case you want to upgrade some gear, you don't have to wait. You can also buy dip some orbs on this other tier, by the way. Some people will miss that. And I recommend doing your three daily faction missions a day. As you can see, they'll, they'll give you a bunch of XP. Let me go to a better zone to show you how much XP they'll give you. As you can see here, these give you 15,000 XP per mission. So when in the later zones, these absolutely give you so much XP. And these are just for your first three dailies. So that's why I recommend farming them. They give you a bunch of XP and they give you some nice gold. I think it's 200 per quest. Once you get the stuff you can upgrade everything in here in the gypsum kiln and get a bunch of this is how you upgrade you can also upgrade by heart runes as well but you can just farm those in normal dungeons so i wouldn't recommend doing that you can also buy weapons here using uh, dungeon materials so if you didn't get a drop that you wanted you can get it here and this is where you also upgrade your artifacts so you just choose a mod here and it'll tell you the requirements that you need 500 dark matter five gypsum ones one chromatic seal Another thing I recommend buying every week is just these gold cache of golden matter. It's 20 gypsum orbs, but they give you 1,500 gold and 250 dark matter. Really good, just 20 gypsum orbs, and you get those simply by going to the faction vendor and buying them each day. And you just do your three daily faction vendor quests, and you'll be good to go. And maybe you're asking what's the best way to level up your weapon mastery. Now, there are some farm spots, but I recommend just joining a race and just getting into a group and then just using whatever weapon you want to farm it's super fast it gives you a bunch of xp and then once the pvp starts to die down or you're not getting much xp anymore just leave and come back later but make sure when you open up any crate that you want to let so like i want to open up my golden chris crates so make sure you have the weapons and jewelry that you want to have equipped because th there is loot opening bias in this game so here i'll grab a, a strength amulet 701 i'll get a heavy headwear not what i'm looking for and some medium feet not the best but it's better than nothing next up i would work on your crafting so crafting is extremely important because it allows you to make those matrixes and then if you don't have those you have to buy them off the market and right now they're extremely expensive so here you can get a jewelry makes for exist and make you a lot of money it does take 250 jewelry crafting so i'd recommend you're just focusing on one or two if you're more casual and not worrying about all the other ones since it does take quite a bit of money and time to grind these up but definitely recommend doing at least one so you can sell some make some extra money i like armoring jewelry food is good as well because food everyone needs food all the time and if you want to know the best way to level up professions there's generally i would look on the market and see what people are buying so, so let's say you wanted to do weapon smithing you can go into here right you know, you can upgrade even these weapon patterns that give you really good XP right now. But generally, you just want to do the first craft of each thing. So the first craft will give you bonus XP. I believe it's three times the normal amount. And just get all your bonus crafts in. Make sure you're selecting the cheapest material. So this would be steel, linen. If you have something right, it will make you use whatever you have. So make sure you you uh, click unown to double check that you can use a cheaper material. But if you wanted to make some money while leveling up your weapon, Everyone will be buying honing stones, so honing stones aren't something bad to craft at least a bit to sell or to use yourself because these are extremely useful. They give you increased weapon damage by 4% for 25 minutes, so these are what will be always needed no matter what. Next up on the list of things you want to do is make sure you have three houses. Just buy the 5k if you're poor. The main reason why you want to buy those is for two main reasons. And one is trophies. So you can type in basic trophies and what these will do is it will give you increased damage to mobs. You can have up to one of these in each house, so three in total. 12% bonus base damage. You can buy the cheaper version. I believe this green version of this. We can go with the minor. Here we go. 250, so at least 3%. That's 9% extra damage, which is pretty useful. You can have 
Another thing you can use your house for is storage chests. You can buy chests on the market, which will increase your overall storage in your bank here, your storage shed. So if I had some, if I had a house here and then put some storage sheds, this will go like this will go well over 2,000 storage. Just by buying those off the market, they can be expensive depending on the tier. So just keep that in mind. So something I wanted to mention was your activity cards here. This is a good way to level up your season pass. You just do activities as seen on the left hand side, and then you just put them in. And so you get three free wild stamps. And then once you, you get each stamp per road that you complete, as you'll see here, I'll get two stamps right here. I can't go over three though, sadly. If you are wondering how many blue stamps that you need to complete a card, it's only five. So just put five blues and then you can complete it with the three wild stamps. You have to do it in a certain way or you will need more, but five is all you need to complete your card. I also would recommend doing some PVP like 3v3 arenas or outpost rush. This allows you to level up your, your PVP track and you get some pretty good rewards from here, such as charms or some potions or even some pretty good legendaries as well. But the main ones that you can get from them are really good artifacts, such as my personal favorite weapon, the Serenity right here. Absolute banger. This one will take you a while, though. Probably one of the hardest artifacts to grind in the game. It's all RNG, and you have to grind quite a bit of PvP to get it. But this thing is makes this is what makes Great Sword an absolute beast. Without this, Great Sword is kind of just mid, in my opinion. As you can see here, I have five trophy buffs. Mine are basic, corrupted, lost, and human. I also have one armoring trophy and another earth trophy. So I have four combat trophies and then my armoring trophy so I can improve my armoring crafting. These are extremely important for late game crafting. So make sure if you're in a profession, you are picking up the trophy for your profession. These will either increase the amount of resources you get when you make something for, so for example, food, or this will increase the overall gear score of stuff that you craft. So armoring. Obviously, my armoring will be plus five gear score higher when I have this trophy. You need generally you would have each of these in all your houses. So I have three major armor crafting crafting trophies in all my houses to get the plus 15 gear score bonus. You can definitely switch switch these out at any time. So don't worry if I'm going to a different dungeon. I will switch out these trophies depending on the mutation that I'm going to be farming to add, so I do extra damage to that dungeon. And here is the chest. You can grab the chest right here. You can also access the inventory. So as you can see here, I have a chest here and I, and I have 2,025 storage. Now do keep in mind that the house price generally will allow you to have more storage chests. So this is a 5k house because I live in poverty and I just have the one chest. But if you have a 20k dollar house, you can definitely put more chests than just one, increasing your score storage even further. Another important thing I wanted to mention was the coatings make sure you always have coatings and ward potions for the dungeons these will help especially in like the worm and the raid these will be lifesavers you know give 15 percent damage to ancient that's a huge damage bonus plus trophies right like that an additional 27 percent damage just to like other buffs that you probably don't even know about that's insane for helping you progress the game another thing that's really useful is ward potions increase damage absorption from loss by 10 percent extremely strong now you don't need the tier 5 versions of these whatsoever tier 3 or 4 is definitely good enough it's just gives you some extra damage making those dungeons a lot easier and the raid such as the hive of gorgons along with the sandworm will definitely need those as well if you guys have any questions regarding anything that i've said in the video feel please feel free to ask down in the comments below i'll be happy to answer any questions and with that i hope you guys all have a fantastic day and you guys keep enjoying new world